Welcome to Social Allo Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. Please, choose your battles wisely. Your worst enemy may actually be the person who seems to want peace, doesn't want to get in a fight with you. That person will actually warn you, give you a chance to walk away peacefully. And what happens next depends on your course of action. And this especially goes for those who have titles and positions from the Lord. Just because you have a title or position does not mean that you are a messenger of God at a particular time. And you have to be careful that you do not interfere with others who are actually serving the Lord in a certain capacity, even if only for a season. You have to be careful that you're not interfering with those individuals, because if you do, you're going to end up fighting against God. So just because you have a title or position, it doesn't mean the Lord is always going to be on your side. And we see an example of this in um, 2 Chronicles 35 with King Josiah, the king of Judah. And in verse 19, it starts, In the 18th year of the reign of Josiah was this Passover kept. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Carchemish, by Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him. On the surface, you may be thinking, Josiah just kept the Passover, so he serves the true and living God. Necho, from Egypt, he probably serves those other gods, like Ra. And on the surface, you may be thinking, the Lord is with Josiah. But let's continue. But he, Necho, sent ambassadors to him, saying, What have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? I come not against thee this day, but against the house wherewith I have war. For God commanded me to make haste. And when he said God, that's capital G. I'll take it from the top. But he sent ambassadors to him, saying, What have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? I come not against thee this day, but against the house wherewith I have war. For God commanded me to make haste. Forbear thee from meddling with God, who is with me that he destroy thee not. Some clear warnings. So even though Josiah was from the Lord's chosen people. He was interfering with God by interfering with Necho, the king of Egypt. He made it clear that he did not come to war against him. Necho also told Josiah that God had sent him to make war with someone else. And then he made it clear to not interfere with his work that he was doing on behalf of the Lord absolutely clear but again it is easy for people with titles and positions from the Lord to make the assumption that whatsoever they do that the Lord is going to be on their side if the Lord does not send you into a battle you may have hell to pay if the Lord does not send you into a battle you may have hell to pay by going in on your own accord Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguise himself. <laughs> In this case, Josiah wasn't just disguising himself from King Necho. He was disguising himself from God. And while he could disguise himself from Necho, he couldn't disguise himself from God. And what some people will do, they will use their title and or position as a cloak, as a disguise to do ungodly things. So even though Josiah was a man of God, when I say man of God, I mean that in the sense where he was a godly man, keeping a Passover and things like that. He wasn't 
he wasn't doing God's work at the time. And he couldn't fool God. You cannot fool God. So, nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself, that he might fight with him, and hearkened not unto the words of Necho from the mouth of God. I have seen this happen where a person thinks that because he or she has a title, and this is especially for prophets who are spokespersons for the Lord, they may have a hard time receiving messages from other people because the Lord will sometimes speak to a person who is not a prophet and a prophet may have a hard time receiving that word from the Lord through another individual. Remain humble. Remain humble. So he hearkened not unto him, not unto words of Necho from the mouth of God, and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. And the archer shot at King Josiah. And the king said to his servants, Have me away, for I am sore wounded. He ignored the warning, so what sir he got was exactly what he deserved. And it continues. His servants, therefore, took him out of, it, out of that chariot and put him in a second chariot, or in the second chariot that he had. And they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died. It would have been so simple for Josiah to listen to King Necho, but because he ignored the king, because he ignored the warning to walk away, to walk away, he paid with his life. And was buried in one of the sepulchres of his fathers, and all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. And that move is actually not unprecedented. We see an example in um, Jeremiah 27, verse 6. The Lord made a statement that a lot of times people may overlook it. But the Lord said, And now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. And the beast of the field have I given him to serve him. So I'll read it again because the Lord is calling Nebuchadnezzar a king that doesn't even belong or believe in the true living God at that time. He was calling him his servant. You never know who the Lord is using to serve him at a certain time. So again, in Jeremiah 27, 6, the Lord said, and now, have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant? And the beast of the field I have given him also to serve him. And a part of why that happened is, Jeremiah had warned the people of Judah to submit themselves to the king of Babylon. But because they ignored that warning, they were about to pay the price. And the Lord was going to use an unbeliever, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, as his servant. Be careful that you don't make assumptions that based on a person's background, that that person is not actually being used by the Lord. Now I mentioned at the time that Nebuchadnezzar was not a believer, but he was a servant of the Lord. And after Nebuchadnezzar had conquered Jerusalem, Nebuchadnezzar also received a warning from the prophet Daniel about his pride. Okay, in Daniel 4, Nebuchadnezzar ignored the prophet's warning to not let pride get the best of him. And a year later, the king fell and he lived like a beast for a season. But in Daniel 4, Verses 34 through um, 37, it states, And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. 
and I blessed the Most High. And I praised and honored him that liveth forever and ever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven. And among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand, or say unto him, What doest thou? A lot of times when the Lord is using a servant that people don't recognize to serve him, people, especially those with godly titles and positions, want to question that servant. And in questioning the servant, they end up questioning God. But Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged that no one questions God to say, what are you doing? At the same time, my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are truth, and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. The Lord will, you can say the Lord will humiliate, but the Lord will humble his servants. The Lord will humble his servants when they get puffed up with pride. And in the final example of being careful who you come against, some of the apostles were in trouble. And members of the Sanhedrin were kind of wondering how to deal with these men who were preaching about this Jesus, who was crucified, died, and then rose from the dead three days later. How could they stop these men from preaching the gospel, the good news of Jesus? But in trying to stop them, they were trying to stop God. And a lot of you are familiar with the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was a Pharisee. His teacher was Gamaliel. And he said in Acts 5 verses um, 38 through 39, And now I say unto you, Refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. There are times when your worst enemy will be the person who is gracious enough to give you an opportunity to walk away. And what happens to you will be based on you heeding the warnings and walking away. Because sometimes you think you're fighting against a person. But because a person, regardless of his or her beliefs, if that person is on a godly assignment and you're fighting against the individual, you're going to end up fighting against God. As in the case of the apostles, they were godly men on a godly assignment that should make it even more clear to not interfere with a person when he or she is doing the Lord's work do not make assumptions that is because you have a title or position from the Lord that the Lord is going to back whatever you're doing because if you enter into a battle that the Lord did not send you into you won't be covered your mantle it won't, you do you, it won't do you any good because you'll find yourself opposing the Lord. King Josiah paid with his life. Do not be like the king who ignored the warning and suffered the consequences.